Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations. No, don't welcome back. Fuck, you know, go away. I don't want to see you. Get the fuck out of my sight. Yeah, we'll watch the next episode. Yeah, again, this one sucks. The murder that occurred in my office. The return of the great thief Yatsugarasu. Thinking back, every back on that fateful day, two days ago. We began. <laughs> We can't. Sorry, I'm trying to speed up, speed rush through it because it's it's, it's timed. Yeah, yeah, everyone knows it's begunded. Begunded. Shit. Edward's dead! Oh, that's not... Oh, shit, never mind. Guys, it's the running time. Oh, shit. Oh, I fly. Dude. Yes, everything began up, up high up in the air, 9,000 feet in the air to be precise. Thank you for flying iFly Airlines. We are currently experiencing some flight turbulence. Sly? We are asking all passengers to please return to their seats and fasten their seatbelts. Oof. Wait, now, is that the wine? Dude. Now, is that the wine or the blood? Yes. Mm. It seems like someone got whacked. Edward, no! Edward just had a drunken tirade on the over. flight. Also, if you are if you're watching this now, I'll have like a, I have like a new border around my stuff, so that'll make my videos look a little bit more fancier. Also, uh, if he is not here again, sadly, he is unable due to his headset issues. Quote unquote, not here. His, he is in, no, 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 Rob, 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 Rob. He is with us in spirit. Mm -hmm. He's with us in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing this spirit. The hell we do over. <laughs> That's I think I forgot how many girls go the way. Because in one night. If you thought we were muting, <laughs> literally interrupted I fucking Lawrence's say. joke. <laughs> yeah, Come on, dude. Yeah, he was, he was in spirit. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, you guys forgot your intros. Woo! Hey, is that Lawrence? Hello. I'm Rob. I'm recording this shit. That was an iffy. The fucking one that interrupted Lawrence. And uh, <laughs> that is fine. there's a judge here somewhere. No. George! There he is. We found him. George. He was lost for a thousand years. <laughs> I just woke up from a horrible nightmare. Because it was a horrible nightmare. Like you were drunk, Edgeworth. 6.14, huh? Guess I was up cold for about 10 minutes. Ha. Slight turbulence indeed. What do you mean, 10% alcohol? That was at least 50. That was 100% that was alcohol, my lad. Only 100%? Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently experiencing some slight turbulence. Fucking For your safety, we ask that you return to your seats and fasten your seatbelts. I suppose turbulence is to be expected on a flight, though admittedly I'm less than comfortable with anything resembling earthquakes. Hmm, what's this? A travel wallet? But it's not mine. Oh, free money. Free money. How does someone else's travel wallet wind up in my pocket? Ugh, my head. Why don't we just head it go away? I'll take care of this travel wallet later. I'll hand it off to an attendant. Ugh, from earthquake like turbulence to an elevator. Fucking hate elevators. <clears throat> what am I doing hesitating like this? Actually, no, I know full well why I hesitate. It was when I was still but a chung child. A chung child, what? I, I was caught up in a murder that we bring up every, almost every fucking game. That happened in an elevator. But how long am I going to let my past haunt me? It's just an elevator. I'm a grown man now. I need to behave like one. What the? What in the world happened? Is there something wrong, sir? I must ask that you please return to your seat. Gah! He, he's, he's dead! Please calm down. We mustn't jump to conclusions about all the facts. What's wrong? Did something happen? You... you... murderer! Oh, what? No! You have it all wrong. It wasn't me! 
Fuck, not again. And once again, just like the case from six, seven years ago. He's on the spot. Everyone, I am sorry to interrupt, but I have an important announcement. I am one of your flight attendants today, Rhoda Tenero. Unfortunately, we have just had a minor accident on this flight. Bro, to nowhere. An accident? Don't treat us like we're stupid. I caught a glimpse and it was a murder. That's fucking Lupin the Third, from what I'm seeing there. What, 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 what murder? What's going on with this flight? Everyone, please calm down. There's no reason to panic. This flight will stay on course and make its scheduled landing. We are still currently in the middle of a rough patch of turbulence, so until we are out of the area of turbulence, I ask that you please remain seated. Oh, that's the, that's the fat guy. Uh, the, the guy who thinks it's big. Uh, George. Oh, yeah, okay, George. George be fat dude. Oh. Well, but someone was killed, right? I mean, uh... <laughs> well, I'm killer. Let me off. <laughs> please, there's uh -oh. no need to feel Wait. threatened. Wait, sorry, but let me off while we're in the middle of the fucking air. We have already apprehended the culprit. Guys, I need to escape the I need to escape the murder by murdering myself. Big brain. I ask that everyone please remain calm. I like to bow before you. What the heck is he talking about? Why should we remain calm? My name is Miles Edward. I am a prosecutor, and I assure you I am not the killer. <laughs> Being a prosecutor doesn't make you incapable of murder, fat ass. <laughs> Now you listen here, I am not the kill, I simply found the body. That was I called you. <laughs> so you say. However, I am sure that you are the perpetrator of this crime. I swear on my honor as a professional flight attendant. Professional? Oh, is that right? I know what I saw. And there's even very strong incriminating evidence to back me up. I know you're a bitch. What kind of incriminating evidence is she talking about? We've already alerted the proper authorities at our destination. Until we land, you will remain in our custody by the powers vested in our captain. I'm very sorry, but please understand our situation. Your situation? I'm always on mine, and I don't like the direction it's going in. I'm about to just sit here idly, by while I get accused of murder. Miss Tanero, is it? Yes. I was wondering if you might give me a chance. A chance? To do what? A chance to plead my case, and a chance to ask what you might meant by incriminating evidence just now. Hmm. To accuse a passenger of such a grave crime without allowing him to give him a proper defense, can the professional flight attendant inside of you really call its action righteous? You have a point. Very well, I'll listen to what you have to say. But be wary of what you reveal. I'm afraid you'll only look even more suspicious if your explanation fails to satisfy. I also do not have the time to deal with you all day, so please make it quick. Of course, as you wish. Good. Very well then. Let's get started. No. I know for a fact I didn't kill that man, the elevator. What I don't know is what sort of evidence he has up her sleeve. But I'm certain it doesn't fit with the crowd of crime really occurred. I swear to tell the whole truth as a professional flight attendant. Nice. This is fucking garbage. God, no, 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 no. Liar. Ugh. Liar! Objection! Uh, Unfortunately for you, Mr. Edgeworth, I am certain you are the killer. The Dating scene I saw in front of the elevator. It was you standing there with fresh blood dripping off the murder weapon. So if you would please cooperate, we'll turn you over as soon as we land. That's it? That's her evidence? I don't think you could ask for a more perfect witness testimony. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? Not really. It's hardly perv when there's a gaping hole in it. <laughs> Edgeworth being the BM right now. Alright, uh, well, you know, you know scene I saw in front of the elevator. This is bullshit. We don't have any fucking evidence, I don't think. No, oh, no we, we have don't. something. You're standing with a wallet. You can't kill someone with a fucking wallet, can you? Yeah, but we need a press yeah, to make sure that she we can know what she's talking about. No, I'm pretty sure that's the... Okay. The murder weapon dripping with blood. Really now? I swear that that was the grisly scene I saw before me. Thank goodness it wasn't a passenger who saw it. There'd be widespread panic by now. As I recall, you were quite panicked yourself at the time. I cannot confirm nor deny this. 
You don't scare enough to misread the situation and accuse me of murder. Nonsense. Professional flight attendants cannot afford to be that flustered. I witnessed the murder scene and I am now listening to your defense, all with a smile. Apparently you also lie with a smile on your face. Okay, fair enough. I'm pretty sure it's the wallet. Yeah, there's definitely no... You can't kill someone with a wallet. I don't know. Not with that. Objection. I know this one. Yeah. Mr. Nero! What, 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 what is with the yelling all of a sudden? Ah, uh, force of habit. What does it matter? Mr. Nero, you say you saw the murder weapon dripping with blood. Is that correct? Yes, all that blood. Drip, drip, drip. Just recalling that scene sends a chill down my spine. Sorry, but your so-called professional flight attendant training has failed you. B what? I'd like to direct your attention to this. Do you know what this is? It's a travel wallet, right? But it looks a little big and bulky. The thing you saw me pulling out when I discovered the bed body in the elevator was this very travel wallet, Mr. Tanero. What? Impossible! Now then, do you still think I am the killer? And I killed him with a travel wallet? But, but, I, no, but, I saw blood dripping from the wallet, I know I did. As you can see, this wallet is very clearly stained. But if you would be so kind as to take a whiff. I think it agrees only grape juice. Uh, then, then... That's right, you mistook grape juice for blood. Grape juice is fucking delicious, I've had some. It's really yeah, but you mean, absolutely yeah, amazing. But you expect it, don't you? Some other weapon driven blood does not in fact exist. Uh, no! So you guys can answer? Are you about to say something? Else? No, that's fine. Dad, I should clear up this pesky situation. Hold it! Oh, actually, oh accusation, I didn't read that properly. W wait, just a sec. That no. is... I mean, even a wallet could be deadly if it was wrapped around something heavy. I demand that you show me what's inside, please. She's trembling, that tacked on please at the end. Sounds like I've got her. There's no need to look inside, even you can tell from its appearance and its light. No, I can't be sure of anything until I see the contents of that wallet for myself. Ah, oh, she's persistent one. I suppose we have no choice but to see what's inside. Mr. Eric, if you'll please have kindness to open the wallet and check its contents for me. Alright. I usually don't pry into passengers' belongings, but we have no choice here. But you're the one who asked to do it! <laughs> Shut up. It seems that this passport is all that's in here. As you saw, there's nothing but a passport inside. This renders your wallet was the murder weapon, uh, um, argument moot. Wouldn't you agree? Hold it! Please, hear me out, Mr. Edgeworth. No. Well, I was wondering whose passport is it exactly. Can I take I a look? You're the one holding it, aren't you? Aren't you the one holding it? What? My hands are tied behind my back! How would I be- <sighs> Sorry, my brain is, like, just broken. It's very good. Being outbrained. <laughs> In the wrong way. Why not? I'm rather curious myself. The smooth brain is running off on him. This is... Just as I thought. This travel wallet belonged to Mr. Ackby Hicks. Ackby Hicks, Republic of Virginia. Which makes it the victim's property. Type P. You... What's type P? Type P? What do you mean? Type P. <laughs> Um, yes, I don't think we'll be able to see it. Okay. Unless, let's just check from there. Uh, let's, let's just check it. Uh, oh no, it's a check, but okay. Uh, but yeah, but let's just check the... the thing. Oh, fair, 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 fair. Oh, doesn't matter. That's uh, fine, yeah. You... you stole the victim's wallet, didn't you? How dare you! You said it yourself. You claimed to be holding this wallet in your hands when I found you. Perhaps I did misconstrue the wallet for the murder weapon, but it seems that I wasn't wrong about who the culprit is. Bitch. As you claimed, the murder weapon is not the travel wallet. However, it is something that you stole from Mr. Hicks after you were done with a vile deed. I find it hard to believe myself, but your motive was very simple. You were out to steal Mr. Hicks's money, weren't you? 
Well, we have evidence against this too. Yeah. So even though I didn't have the murder weapon on me, you still suspect me, I see. You stood up at the crime scene with the victim's wallet in your hands. How could I turn a blind eye and not suspect you of foul play? Well, considering the money's all over Act B Hicks right now. Yeah. As you claim, the murder weapon is not the travel wallet. However, it is right, something that you stole from Mr. Hicks after you were done with a foul deed. I find it hard to believe myself, but your motive was very simple. You were out to steal Mr. Hicks's money, weren't you? But we can just present this because he's literally surrounded in money, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if I'm to get a word in this scenario. No. But what is it now? Uh, I would not take no as an answer. Miss Tanera. I wonder if you noticed the contradiction within your own testimony. But what are you talking about? It's simply impossible that the murder of the motive the murder. The motive for this murder was monetary theft. The murder for this motive. <laughs> the murder for this motive. One glance at the crime scene should have told you that. What about this scene proved that a motive for murder was not the money? The fucking the money, money, bruh! The fucking money! <laughs> if I may direct your attention to the thing strewn over the floor. Ah! That's right, the floor is covered in bills and coinage. By your rationale, these things are the very these are the very things the killer was after. Ah! I think we can assume that the wallet fell during the victim's struggle with this killer. And I'd think that the killer would have noticed something like money scattering everywhere. Furthermore, as you can see, there was no effort made by the killer to gather the money. But, but the wallet... Ah, yes, the wallet. You will also recall the only thing that was in it was Mr. Hicks' passport. Ah. If you are really insisting that it was a crime based on greed, then you're claiming it was all for an empty travel wallet. I... I... I hey, 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 hey. Forgive me, please. No. Also, dude. What? Identity theft is identity theft is like a crime, and it is like a, a thing that people might do. Yeah, but come on, man. On the fucking airport, an identity theft doesn't require st well, it requires that you have information. Why would you kill him for it? If he's dead, then it becomes useless. I mean, it's a motive. Hey, what the heck? Are you saying the attendant's wrong? So that guy isn't the killer? Ha! <laughs> Don't believe it, everyone! It's a trick! Will you all please be quiet before I shoot you? I mean... Tell you to shut up. Miss Tanero. Yes? You lost your call when you saw the dead body. Plus the lounge was dark and looking into the light from the elevator. It's easy to see how you mistook the wallet in my hand for the murder weapon. I take no offense that you thought I was the killer. Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you for releasing me. Oh my god. I mean, reminds of the stupid um, Spyro game where it's like. Quick, George, speak you, gibberish. Scarab for on Bud, Bud, Bud. No, this is, I remember Spyro is like, thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Like, every statue would just say that. <laughs> what is it now? I said Scarab for on Bud, Bud, Bud. Scarab on Bud, Bud, Bud. Up, down, left, right, A, B, start. Well, sorry, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, start. Or well, select, I don't remember. Miss Tenoro, if you could please translate, I'd much oblige. It, it sounds like Borginian, but I... I don't understand any of it. There's another attendant on this flight who... I said that he's giving... Give, uh, sorry, why... <laughs> speak like, speak uh, foreign. Uh, I have to use, um... American knees. American knees. <laughs> I said that he's giving the run, giving the runabout. Ugh. I don't require an interpreter. I speak. Oh, it's just English. For, just well, see. Yeah, you see, speaking English, he's just talking in a far. He's just got a foreign accent. Just or, ja or Japanese, depending on which uh, version of the game you have, probably. <laughs> you, the attendant. Yes, sir. I want this person to be under arrest until we arrive at the airport. No. Meanwhile, <laughs> it looks like a, I can't see what that is. It's too tiny. It looks like a like it's polishing. It looks like one of this. It's like he's polishing like a golden statue of a man with like a dick or something stupid. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> really it it is pretty fucking phallic, yeah. It looks phallic from here, yeah. I can't tell. I'm sorry, sir. But what exactly are you hoping for? 
What is it you want? I'm finished talking to you, little likes of you. Please, I would like to hear about why you would why you would like me to be held under arrest until we land. Because I don't like you, that's why. Listen, Fair enough. How dare you try to waste my time? You're the one who sucked your nose into my affairs! I wanted to spend even my uh, uh wanted to spend even at least one more second with my precious heart. I have no time for other things. I know what you are. I see through you. <sighs> Insolvent, yes. I am pretty sure that's how you say it in English. Well, I'd hope I don't uh, dissolve into water, but I don't think that's what you meant. I'm sorry, but I don't think I caught your name. I'm Zinkelblank the second, and I'm a very wealthy man in Virginia. In the Virginia. <laughs> in the Virginia. <laughs> But I'm not an ordinary rich man, I am an art dealer, a rich seller of beauty. Okay. Mr. LeBlanc, what did you mean just now? Shut up! Um, <laughs> when you said that Mr. Edgeworth was giving me the runabout... Do I have to explain? Unbelievable! I was said once and once more... only once. I do not have even a second to waste. <laughs> Time is money, as they say. <laughs> they kill the time is money as slow as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and yet you continue to blabber on. I saw it. Yes, I did. I saw the victim go into the elevator. Going down to the lounge. I saw her exactly at six o'clock. And what's the significance of that time? At six, he says. Wait, you saw him at six? God, uh, what's the matter, Mr. Edgeworth? He understands, I see. Miss Attend, why did you discover the... Oh, what time did you discover the body? Well, it was a little after that patch of turbulence, so I'd say around 6.50... Aha! Hicks was his name, was it? And I say the man Hicks was killed at the 15-minute time span. And the only person in the lounge at that time was this prosecutor, yes? Could you not, could you not point that gun at me, please? Good sir, come on. He's like a foreign Trump, isn't he? Foreign Trump. <laughs> does he not. Does, uh, does, does this is like his. Like, just you, the shape uh, of his face not remind you of it. Uh, and the only person in the lounge at that time was this man over here. Yeah, I was in my seat the whole time. But me too, I was watching the movie and enjoying a fine glass of grape juice. Oh, I'm still eating. <laughs> I haven't finished yet, so... Try, he sounds like disgusting. Never passengers have an alibi, so you have no problem with them, I suppose. No complaint, I see. Not a single word against this, right? I have no way of discounting what you have put forth at this point, but it wasn't me. <laughs> oh, so you say? But what do you have? You have... Uh, what, what? Do you have uh, what? The evidence. I don't speak English, but what evidence do you have? <laughs> he says the guy who speaks English. Mr. Edgeworth, <laughs> are you really the culprit after all? Miss LeBlanc, I suppose you're quite certain what you saw, enough to give testimony. Of course, I was looking at the man the whole time. He was playing with that annoying little, um, small machine the whole time. Bang, bang. Machine? Yes, that's what you people call it in English, yes. You're making the crazy with the click, click, click. From that description, it sounds like some sort of small computer. I believe what Mr. LeBlanc is talking about is a cell phone. I have to say that I did see him playing with it quite a bit myself. A simple cell phone? A lot of all I can see, but that's kind of low budget. <laughs> I hate that noisy little machine in his hand. I saw it like so, and I killed him. Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Not a fragment of beauty, and all it produces is ugly sounds. Anyway, I know what I saw. I don't. Please tell me. I just did. Tell me again. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Nero. Yes? I was wondering if I might be granted permission to examine the crime scene. What? You want to examine the crime scene? If you'd grant me a little measure of time, I'm sure I could produce the real culprit. I don't like the sound of that fox in the duck pen. Yes, I think that's how you say it in English. It's fox guarding the hen house, and I believe my innocence was proven earlier. 
And if I'm given the chance, I can clear up all the remaining doubts. Miss Tenero, if you wait until we arrive, there's a good chance that some evidence won't be destroyed by then. I understand. Let me see what the captain has to say. Ha, that should not be approved. Please, Mr. LeBlanc, in an emergency, all decisions are to be made by the captain alone. And please wait here while I go ask the captain what to do. I'll be right back. Woman. The way you bent your back it looks like it was like could have broken it or something. You're not planning to raise evidence while you're doing your investigation, yes? Of course not. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, you have the captain's permission to investigate the crime scene. Oh, bullshit! <laughs> I say in English. I am in your debt, Miss Tanero. However, there is one condition. I am to supervise you. Can you agree to that? I mean, I thought that was obvious. Like, of course you're going to tell watch me. <laughs> that makes no sense. It's only natural I am still the suspect in this case. <laughs> I take full responsibility and will watch Mr. Edgeworth's every move. I hope that this is reassurance enough that there will be no foul play. Now then, it's Mr. Edgeworth, shall we proceed? If you should need my help with anything, please feel free to touch the partner button. What the fuck's the partner button? What's a button? It's what? me, Mr. Edgeworth. Touch me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. First you, first you tie me up from behind, and now you ask me to touch your partner button. What the fuck is wrong with you? Probably even hit the first date. Anyways, it's time to head to the scene, scene of the crime, the first floor lounge. Why do we go? Why do we go all the way back? I guess that's where the stairs are. Oh, look. Oh, woman. Excuse me, but may I have a word with you? You there! If you need something, please ask Miss Rhoda over there, okay? What the? Hey, wake up, you! I'm terribly sorry that she's being so rude, Mr. Edgeworth. No need for you to apologize, I just find it hard to believe she's asleep on the job. If I were her boss, I'd see to her, her salary was cut so low that it was in the red. Unfortunately, her boss Speaking is Speaking of which, comes you! She just smacks the papers once again. Okay, sir. In order to preserve the crime scene, I'm afraid the elevator is not in service. To get to the first floor lounge, we should take the stairs. Oh, okay. Fuck, I hate them. The deep I always take the stairs. Last 12, 7.26 a.m. We're in the lounge. Look at that fucking statue. I want to thank you for your help back there, Miss Tenero. It was nothing. You should thank the captain for granting you permission. And just so everything is perfectly clear, I still don't trust you to that extent. I don't want you to think your standing with me has changed. Well, considering you want me to touch your partner, boss, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of being told the difference here. <laughs> I received an order from the captain earlier. He wanted you to know that we reserve the right to stop your investigation if we feel you are not making progress. And when we do, he asks that you please return to your seat at that time. I'm a time goes out out of his his and his crew's discretion, does it? I find a way to discredit Mr. Blanc's testimony before time's up. I understand. By the way, is there any place you can think of where the killer might have hide on board? I don't think so. After every first class passenger was accounted for at his or her seat, we made a thorough and well, we made a thorough search of the plane. As for business and economy class, no one can move between those two classes in first class without a staff key card. And we found no record of a keycard being used at all. How big is this plane? Three floors. What? Plus, the bottom floor is also a cargo floor, so it's fucking huge. Yeah, how do you have multiple? I understand, like, two. You could probably get really fancy planes, but I've never seen one. I've never seen. I've never, I've never heard of a such a big plane. Like, how do you get such a big plane? Anyways, it means I have a first class kid on my hands. At least I know that much for sure. And one other thing. No one else has been allowed near this crime scene since the murder was discovered either. We'll see you guys guess. next time on Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations. FFL. See you around.